I think, you know, in minicamp, it's just kind of the, the culmination of the whole off-season program, and we got a lot of things in, and we threw a lot of things at them, situational football, and tried to make it uh, chaotic the last two days and very game-specific, what we're going to have to execute and how we got to function to win games. So from a programming standpoint, you can make it extremely game-like, which today was, and I um, thought they did a pretty good job with it. Yeah, I think guys that, you know, they stay in that right mindset to continue to improve. You know, I think that experience, taking that next step, certainly will help. It was experience that Des has a lot of a lot of starts. That's the hardest thing to replicate at the hardest position to me in all pro sports is that quarterback. You know, we look at this as a build-up phase, and guys are at different points. You know, some guys have at different workout programs, but uh, so this is just, it's non-contact, it's a passing camp, it's a build-up, it's a basically extension of OTAs. You know, you can do a little bit more in terms of meetings, you get the physicals, you know, assess certain areas, but that's what we call this time of year. It's a build-up as we get in the training camp, obviously we'll be in the training phase there, building up for the season. It's a process, you know, it's hard when you, you get to the pinnacle of, you know, the success in this sport and uh, you feel like it was taken away from you. It wasn't something that was easy to live with. It was very hard to, to go through that and then you know have surgery and your son be born four days after and just you know so many mixed emotions uh, uh, that I've had to deal with over the years but it kind of all gets put to rest you know now because it's like you're here. Talk to our guys about a lot of preparation has gone into this point we put a lot of work in already but this becomes our official beginning uh, going forward for the 2023 season and everybody's very excited to get started. Whenever a player has something going on or misses for not misses but he's not here for some reason I am concerned. That's that's my my sentiment with any player, in particular a player um, as important to us as Steph. And so uh, I get concerned when players miss for reasons off the field, for reasons on the field, whether it be uh, they're injured or whatever it is. Um, that's just how I am. So when I say very concerned, I'm very concerned um, because it's a situation with one of our uh, players and. It was something that we needed to work through. And it's those are healthy conversations that happen. Um, and uh, I'm extremely appreciative of those conversations. It, get, it gets us, when you have those healthy conversations, it gets you to a better spot. And, uh, and I feel good about that. I feel, I feel like we're in that spot. Completed the off season, feels good. And I like where we're at. Um, still got some work to do, but you know we checked all the boxes that we wanted to as far as getting installations in, getting a good look at players. You know now we have a chance that these players have. You know you really it's a break, but it's really not a break, right? You got to st- you got to keep working hard, to get in shape. It's a break mentally from the game as far as studying, but physically keep getting better and be ready to go at training camp. I just see leadership. You know, he's always gonna. He's always the hardest worker. He's always the first guy out, last to leave. Uh, he's always done that. But now I can see that because his confidence is growing. You know, he is uh, taking that to a different level in terms of being a vocal leader um, and talking to guys and and being able to uh, bring guys together and then crossing the aisle. You know, we don't have really don't have an aisle here at the Bears. We're all Chicago Bears, so it's important that he's uh, working with the defensive guys and talking to those guys. And, you know, we, uh, you know, those guys all respect him because of his work ethic. And now he's starting to be more vocal. So that's pretty, pretty neat to watch. You get more comfortable in the position. You know how to flex a little bit better. Um, You're more comfortable with the coaches. The coaches are more comfortable with the players. It's just a second time through it. But, you know, we also added a lot of players this year too. You know, so we got a lot of new guys that are new to the system. You know, the rookies are new to the system. All the guys that we, you know, acquired during the offseason are new to the system. So uh, we still have a lot of work to do. The goals never really change for me. They never really have. You know, the top the top of the mountain is always the goal personally and team-wise. So, you know, even coming into the league, that's that, that was my goal. And I wouldn't say that has changed year to year. I wouldn't necessarily say motivation. I would, I would say maybe urgency. You know, we've we've been there, done that. Um, now it's time to take that next step. I wouldn't say that's extra motivation because we've been we're motivated every game, every day, every year. Uh, but I would say the sense of urgency has has risen in that locker room. I'm pretty far ahead of where I was last year. Last year it was you know as far as football been on the field, just learning a new system, uh, trying to adapt to you know different teammates, different players, how guys run routes, you know how Kevin calls the plays. And just being able to, you know, process the game um, at the speed I know. I'm very excited. You know, it's just a lot more responsibility for myself, but uh, I like the weight on my shoulders and, and for me to be able to go out there and, 
you know, show what I what I got and, and help me lead this team to a lot of victories. That's the that's where I want to get to. I love the way we challenge Dak mentally, and, and, and more more importantly, I love the way he's attacked it. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's. I wouldn't say I didn't know it about him. I just, I just think it's just, you know, just like all of us, you don't really know until you really go out there and stress and push. But he, he has, uh, he's really handled these changes and adjustments. You know, the input, uh, and you know, because at the end of the day, the quarterback, and it's just the way I've always done it. Was like at Green Bay and he, you know, all the way back to New Orleans. They need to own the offense. You know, I'm, I have no interest in, in being known as some guru coach or a smart coach. I, I'm, a, I'm a smart Hall of Fame type quarterback. So the only way to get there is they, you got to make them own the offense and uh and he, you you see it all he has a personality uh, but it's just like anything so, you know this is our first year of playing the way we want to play and he's done a, a really good job of taking ownership of that and then with that you know the mental challenges um you know he is he's knocked it out of the park we got to understand what we're trying to accomplish as a team and look it's always the challenge for the o and d lineman and and so um and we also have to be able to understand discipline wise how to get to the edge but not cross the line and so games come up we saw it last year playoff run i referenced the cincinnati bengals penalty late you've got to train yourself mentally to get on to the next play and uh that's why we're we're doing what we're doing those guys got a lot of pride about them you know our it starts with our d coordinator i mean aaron glenn is a prideful coach and uh and we want to be a top tier defense and so with that it's the way you go about your business but it's also the pieces you have as well and so you know it just happens to be some of those pieces we added you know they have a lot of confidence and ultimately what happens is it bleeds into your offense because they get frustrated and then that's why I kind of like it because it, it forces you to, you know, you kind of find out the guys that they want to shut them up. You know, I thought we've had an outstanding off season. All in all, I think we're further ahead than I feel like we've really ever been here in terms of a conditioning standpoint. So I'm happy with the progress that, that our guys have made. I think the off season is a great opportunity for our guys to, when they do get away from here, they've got to continue to work and put that work in and work on themselves. Uh, both physically and mentally and just making sure everybody has a plan and that that's par for the course for all our players. Competitive, I think he comes in, uh, throws a really good ball, a nice touch to it, um, deep underneath. Um, it's a good quarterback with a good touch and, and knows when to put a zip on the ball. But right away, standing tall in that in that quarterback pocket, making good decisions. Um, I like where he's at already. Yeah, you see the energy, guys flying around, wanting to learn. Um, and starting from the details in the meeting room, you're seeing guys being able to come in and soak it up and uh, being able to apply it out on the practice field. The urgency, the details are there. Um, like I said, just guys applying pressure right away. Um, Reminds me a lot of that, that Rams team, you know, a lot of energy, um, guys being excited to come to work and, and practice. Um, you know, it starts at the workplace, and I think D'Amico is bringing that energy right away. I always look at the team. Like, I never make it about yourself, and never make it about you, make it about everybody, you know. I think all groups need to step up, you know, when their time is to step up and go make a play, they need to make a play. And how do we get that done? We get it done in the media rooms, we get it done on the practice field, so when the lights come on on Sunday, our guys are ready to go. It's been everything I dreamed of. You know, it's a lot of work, and when I say a lot of work, I mean a lot of work. You know, just being in here with the vets, just working, watching them work, and then just trying to find my own routine with that, within everything and just grind day in, day out. Everything I dreamed of, but it definitely is a lot. No, this has been good for them. You know, a lot, lot more reps, um, you know, more more tape to evaluate, you know, as we uh, prepare for, for training camp, and it's been it's been good. You know, they've guys have done a really good job. It's a really good group, a uh, really good group of young players that we brought in. You know, for, for myself and the new coaches, I think it's, you know, it's it's uh, it's much easier this offseason, you know, figuring things out and, and knowing where to be and, you know, what time to be there, and I think the same for the players, you know. It, it's just that familiarity in year two, and it just gets stronger, you know, each year that you're together, and, and um, you know, and, and bottom line is you, you, you come here and um, you don't have to figure out all that stuff. It's, it's a, you come here and it's work time, you know, and we have to get better. And, and uh, I, think, I think everybody really felt that this offseason. No, it's been cool. It's been, uh, it's been great to see. Uh, for, as far as offensively, you can see the guys that have been here for another year now, how, how much more comfortable they are. Uh, working the new guys in, I think we've had a lot of we have a lot of young, talented guys that uh, really have stepped up as the camps went on. 
Um, and I'm excited for them to keep progressing. And then as far as defense, uh, same thing. I mean, all those guys were so young last year. Uh, fr from then to now, uh, you see so much improvement, how they're able to disguise stuff and how they're able to not give away tells and stuff like that. And we have a, we talk about that stuff. Like we, I talk to the linebackers, I talk to the DBs, what I'm seeing. They talk to me about what they're seeing. And I think that's what makes a great team is you have to get better by competing against each other. The reality is, is all of us can do better, starting with me. And there's never been a season that you go through where you don't evaluate what you did and realize that, you know, there were some mistakes that you made and a lot of things that you can do better. And our game is, I would say, evolving every year. If you don't evolve with it, sometimes you can just get run over. You know, if you just stay stagnant and, and stay committed to something that may have worked, you know, seven, 10, 12 years ago, uh, it might not necessarily be the best thing to do anymore. There's definitely a change uh, that we've tried to implement for the better. And if our players are, are saying the right things in that regard, it's not because we're telling them to. I hope that is what they feel uh, because it's better for them. It's a combination of factors. I just think that Justin has a comfort zone with who he's throwing to as well. Uh, you know, I think the, the continuity of being able to throw to Keenan and uh, to Mike, to DP, to Gerald, you know, when you know your weapons, I think that you can be more aggressive. So I think there's a comfort zone. And then, you know, obviously the comfort zone within, you know, our system as well. So those are all positive things. And, um, you know, and this is, you know, going on Justin's fourth season in the NFL. So I think he knows who he is as a player. Um, and, you know, he's improved so much. And, you know, these guys around him, uh, you know, you will be aggressive when you have the type of weapons that we have. So it's been, like I said, it's been a really competitive couple days and it's good. It's been good to see the group come together. You know, it doesn't really change much for us. We try to be inside out. Um, you know, there's been years, you know, our first year when we had probably similar expectations and sometimes it's good to be able to, you can never replicate, you know, some of those things or ignore the experiences that you've accumulated over the time, but you can be reminded of being inside out, not worrying about what those things entailed and just doing the best job that you can every single day. Enjoy coaching these guys. It's a blessing and continuing to, you know, learn from your own mistakes as a coach and, and give these guys some grace as they're working through it. And so um, that youthful exuberance that you see from a lot of these guys has rubbed off on our coaches. Um, you know, you're reminded this, 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 this is fun. You know, this is a this is a good thing for us, and um, you guys know I've talked about it. There was times when you reflect back on it that I, it, it wasn't, and um, you know I'm not going to make the same mistakes again in terms of the things that I can control for these players, for these coaches, and um, we're going to enjoy this. We're going to be urgent with our approach, but we're going to make sure that uh, you know trying to pursue being great at something it doesn't have to be miserable, and um, you know we'll see that come to life. And I'm more interested in us modeling the way than anything else. Year two, um, the prerequisite is that he, as the quarterback, he has to have ownership of everything he's doing and what everyone else is doing um, as the uh, facilitator of the, of the offense. And he's checked that box every, every day. It's been really cool in the year's time how he's not only learned the language, but is now fluent in it. And that opens quarterbacks up to doing some of the components of the job that it's really hard to try to be the leader of an offense and motivate guys and encourage guys um, when you need to, or uh, you know may maybe be hard on guys when you need to, when you're just trying to spit out a play and know your own assignment. I went into this off season hoping that I would see a graduation of sorts and really have every single day, so. I think anytime you have personnel versatility it's a way you can apply pressure. How many different guys in different roles that, uh, you know, in the run and pass game, uh, can we apply pressure to the defense with different types of ways that you've got to defend us? Meaning uh, there's no rule that, you, you know, you can't put three tight ends out. So there's no rule when you're really moving around a featured player like Justin or like TJ. Uh, KJ, Josh Oliver, when you start throwing out these names, you really start saying to yourself, okay, how are we being defended? Or more than likely, what are the multiple ways we're being defended? And then what ultimately can we control as coaches and me as a play caller uh, to consistently give our guys advantages within all 22 guys out on the field and how they're deploying defenses and how we're deploying our guys? And then how does it all fit in with giving Kirk as many answers to the test as we possibly can based upon how we want to activate the whole picture? But it's uh, a lot goes into it. Um, it's a good question and, and uh, it's something that I spend a lot of time on. 
yeah, it's been really good. It's been normal. Um, I think everything he's done so far has been really good. I think the communication is the most important part um, and trust. I think it all starts with that when you're uh, with a new coach and um, he's done a great job and controlling the room. I feel like everyone's on the same page. Uh, just got to continue to do it. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So we know that. And he's obviously had great experience in the NFL and at Alabama where I was at. So there's a lot of good stuff that we've talked about and um, just looking forward to working with him. Oh, I think there's growth every year. Um, you know, some of us have been around for a while, and I think you learn every year. Um, so, you know, incrementally, rookie year is the big learning year. Second year, big jump. Third year, you know, I mean, you keep growing incrementally, but I think those first two years, uh, or especially year one to year two, after you have the understanding of what's going on, you know, big years. But, yeah, Max worked hard. Um, you know, he's... Like all players that are in here every day working hard, they get better, they improve. Um, he's certainly in that category. No, I don't want to get into comparisons in terms of where we were last year. Um, it, it really is not going to have any bearing on what we are uh, this year. Uh, I do feel like that, um, like I said earlier, I feel like, you know, I feel good about where we're at and the direction that we're headed. And uh, But yet we still got a ton of stuff that we got to work on and, and, and improve on. I think there's a lot of competition in a lot of different areas. You know, kicker being one of them, I think there's some good competition in the defensive backfield. Um, I think there's some good competition at the wide receiver position. So um, I, I, I was saying the other day, I feel like we've got, I feel like we've got some pretty good depth uh, in terms of starter training camp. So that's one of the things that has me excited. Well, I think one of the most important things in, in spring is, is the strength and condition. I think those guys have done a good job with that. And then, you know, the chemistry that you build with one another, not just on the field, but off the field, getting to know one another. We've, we've signed a bunch of new free agents. We have the college guys coming in. So, um, again, it's been a good group to work with. You know, time will tell here as we, as we get started in training camp. We've got a lot of areas to improve on. You know, not just in, the, in that area, and not just on defense, but on offense in the kicking game. And those are some of the things we've talked about here. Um, we're going to have to work on once we get pads on. I love that. I mean, awesome, awesome young young kid. Uh, you know, the whole whole world in front of him. He's got all the talent and ability. You need your best players to be the best people on your team. He's definitely one of them. Love spending time with him. Love just watching him. I mean, there's at least one time of practice he does something. He kind of looking back at Todd and Hack and Rob. I was looking back, going, "Wow." Uh, so that's that's exciting. But the thing I like and that I'm encouraging is you know more communication across the ball. We get uh, at some point, you know, possibly uh, the best corner and the best receiver in the NFL. Uh, is a legit possibility, I think, for those two guys. Maybe not this upcoming year. I still think Devontae is in a league of his own. The last six weeks have been about the most fun I've had in a while. So it's fun to come to work and be excited about what we're doing. You see the fundamentals continuing to grow. Um, and that's from the guys that just got here, right? The fundamentals of, of what we're trying to, to look like. But then just how much better, too, the, the guys that have been here are with their fundamentals and that they just they just keep getting better. And that's just our message, and that's just what we, we, we strive to do is just to get better every day. And, and you're really seeing that in a lot of our players, just that their fundamentals are, are, uh, are really improving. Um, and that, that's because that's one reason is because they're really working hard at it, and two, we, we're devoting a lot of time to it in our individual phases of, of OTAs. You know, fundamentals and just, I, I understand what our system is now and I can work all the things that I know that we want to do this season. Um, so just have, a, have an idea of what that is and, and getting a head start on it, I think was pretty huge. And I've been echoing this since I first got here, really mastering the offense and, and being that like extension of the coaching staff. And, you know, I can echo things of how I want it and, and how I like it. And, and the coaches have been great. And, you know, the communication from player to coach has been great and then we're kind of spreading it out to the, to the receivers the running backs tight ends and everyone's on the same page so I think communication is number one uh, you know in my position and, and letting people know um, you know where they need to be and this, these guys are all professionals and they show up and they, and they work hard so it's, it's, a, it's a great group to be around um, it's like I keep saying it's a good first day but you know lots of lots of build on which I think we have a great group I thought we had a great group last year and I think we just added some great pieces that can help us with depth and, and uh, you know bring some other things to the table 
Um, but, you know, those guys, man, we, we go as they go, really. They're, they're the heart and soul of our offense and um, great group to be with, some, with some great leadership, guys who play a lot of football. So it's a, it's a great group to uh, go out there and play with. It's OTAs. So, I mean, every position, like I, I think I've said to you guys before, like I don't try to come in and know who's ahead or not. This is a, all this stuff gives these guys a chance to have a chance to compete in training camp. Um, when you don't practice football an entire off season, you don't do any practice of football since you know your last game. Um, it's very hard to come to training camp and be ready to beat someone out. And so that's what you try to provide all this stuff for, is just to give guys a chance to get their, learn the offense, get their timing, get everything. So now when they go to training camp, they're ready to compete. And that's truly where I see the competition starting. We just keep pointing out the great examples that we have. We've got great leadership. We've got guys that have been there and done that, that are willing to share their ideas and share their scars of you know the mistakes they've made. And we keep challenging them. And what's most important is we continue to communicate really well. So we're making sense to them and they hear us and they, they, they take note. And, and uh, these guys are really responsible. They're gonna respond in, in that. They'll, they'll meet all of their deadlines. They'll call in, they'll do all of their stuff and you know to, to keep so we can keep track of them. And that's all we can really ask. These guys have made nothing but a really good first impression. I, I said this before, and I, I, it's really the truth. It, we can feel the carryover from the way the last group came in. These guys have done the same thing. They've been on it. They've been working hard. They've been studying. Um, they look like the guys we drafted, you know, and, we, and we're hoping to see. Uh, and it's been across the board, so it's been really positive. Um, they're in good shape right now, and the big challenge is to send them off uh, after next week, you know, where they stay with it and they get in the best best condition of their life. So that's what that's the challenge for us. But they've done everything we asked of them and it's been really positive. We got a good amount of the concepts installed, you know, as far as the mixing and matching and the things we have to do, we'll get that done in training camp. It's kind of hard without pads to really get the running game instilled, but we got the concepts done, so we were happy about that. It's a physical game up front, whether it's offense or defense. You want to see how they play in pads. Like you said, we don't award nobody in shorts and t-shirts, so all of them have to show out once we get in pads. Try to get the ball out of his hands and try to make sure he's making the right read. And if the guy's covered, try to throw it out of bounds. You're a quarterback, you're going to take some chances and you're going to have some turnovers. Uh, just try to limit them as much as we can. I mean, we ask every player that you train the way that you're going to play. And when you play a skill position, you, you, you have to run, you have to go and open up and you have to change direction. And it's not five yards, it's whenever you have to cut. So there's reactionary movements, D linemen. Like there, there's certain things that are gonna be in the job description. And we ask every player, uh, that's why we do the drills that we do. That's why we practice the way that we practice because we wanna practice the same way that we're gonna play and uh, to, to finish and, and to try to go get an extra block and protect the guy with the ball and all those things that, that we think help us win. So that's the most important thing is that you're thinking in a manner that you're going to train the way you're going to play. You know, I, I, th I think one of the things that, you know, with, with what we want to do offensively and, and again, feeling pretty good about the quarterback position. I mean, not that we didn't feel good about it, you know, back then, but th these are guys with a little different dimension. And if, if, if we, you know, if, if, if it is true and they do come through and do play the way that we hope that they, they, they can play, we believe they can play. Um, with some of the things that we're doing on the offensive side, it most certainly could change and impact us uh, in a positive fashion. I, I think uh, some of the um, you know, stuff that sitting down and listening to Eric talk about it, um, you know, the excitement in which he talks about it is all is, is, is great. But to listen to the strategy side of how he wants to attack and the way he wants to attack and the way he wants to use the throws and the way he wants to use the runs, there are there is some opportunities for us, and, and I'm pretty excited about that. He looked good. He really did. Um, really excited about it. Looks like he's got some explosion back, uh, which is one of the really neat things in, in terms of watching him. His get off. You know, he he looks like he's he's more confident. In it, obviously, feel very good about what we're seeing from our, our guys.